check out this most perfect day we have here. There's not a breath of wind, it's glass calm. The water is literally crystal clear. We're in 50 feet and you can see the bottom. Check this out. Look, how amazing is that? Literally can see, you could probably see a fish down there. I wish I had my dive gear. Oh my gosh, crystal clear. So today our plan is to do some drift fishing. There's not a lot of wind, so I don't think our drift is going to be very fast at all. Hopefully we have some current to give us moving so we don't stay in the same spot all day. But we're going to be drifting on this like 50, 40 foot reef ledge that we have here out of Hillsborough Inlet. We just went out of the inlet. We're literally right in front of the inlet. You can see the lighthouse, that's Hillsborough Inlet Lighthouse right back there. We have some ballyhoo for bait, we have some squid for bait, as well as some glass minnows for chum, as well as a box of chum. So hopefully we can catch some fish today. My plan is to kind of eat whatever I catch that is legal. But we'll see how that ends up going. Literally, no wind. Like, zero miles per hour. You can feel the sweat forming on oh, you today. Yeah. It is so hot. <laughs> it's gonna be a hot one. Look at this though. This is our reef ledge right here. So I'm on the reef ledge and you can kind of see stuff at the bottom. You know, that's rocks, it's sea fans, there's fish off the bottom, grunts, you know, any kind of schools of fish going on. This is probably like a file fish or something. Trigger fish coming up high because they see the boat and want to check us out. So we're pretty much just gonna drift down this ledge. Not sure if we're gonna drift yet, but let's get some baits in the water. I got some ballyhoo here that we had frozen in the freezer. And this is a Dexter Tiger Edge knife. It is like the perfect boat to keep. It's the perfect knife to keep on the boat. It cuts right through bait. Like I said, this is literally like frozen ballyhoo. And check that out. Cuts so nice. Yeah. Cutting frozen bait is definitely no easy ordeal. Um, I'm not gonna keep the heads, and I'm also not gonna keep the tail. I feel like this is how a lot of people cut themselves, is trying to cut, cut bait, bait on a rocking boat. And this knife really helps. So there you go. If you guys are interested in the Dexter knives, and save 20% with code BROOK20 on DexterOutdoors.com. Now let's put some of these on the hook. Today I'm going to use my favorite conventional rod and my little avit that you guys always see me use. This is actually a custom rod. It's like a 15 to like what, 25 pound class rod, Vic? Yeah. So I have 30 pound leader. I have 1-0 Mustad B cooks here. I have two of them. So this is like a dropper loop rig and I got my Ballyhoo chunks. And then I have it down to a three ounce sinker. The thing with fishing like this is a lot of times you're probably going to lose your bait more than you probably catch your fish, but that's just what happens. So literally, I'm just gonna drop this baby down and then we're just gonna wait for a bite. Like I said with this, you'll probably lose your bait a lot because you're dropping down where there's tons of different kinds of reef fish. I mean, there's probably little things like sergeant majors nipping at your bait that are really small. They're not gonna eat that whole chunk in your hook. But you just gotta be patient for the big enough fish to come by to eat your bait. As I'm drifting, I'm just gonna let my line out to keep my sinker on bottom. First fish. Oh my gosh, that is the smallest strawberry grouper I have ever seen. Look how cute that thing is. Wow. That's the cutest thing ever. A little baby strawberry grouper. See ya. Oh. He's so small. Okay. Next thing we caught is a little grunt. When you're fishing like this, you wanna grab your sinker, put it in the rod holder like that. Take your rod, put it in gear. Set that in the rod holder so your weight's in there, not banging around, bouncing on the boat. And then you can unhook your fish. This is a little grunt. You said you're gonna eat anything you Yeah, catch. but he's really small, I'm not gonna eat him. Look at his orange mouth. A lot of times you can see these guys kissing on the reef and you see that beautiful orange mouth. See ya. We're on again, third drop down. We've gotten a fish every single time we've dropped down. And I think they're getting a little bit bigger each time. Nope, they're definitely not. <laughs> Look at that. We caught the twin sister of the first strawberry grouper we caught. Wait in the rod holder, rod in the rod holder. Unhook your fish. A little tiny bit bigger than the last one, but look at that, the hook's barely in them. No damage done. 
beautiful little strawberry grouper going back to grow bigger. Okay, I knew we'd catch one of these eventually. This is a pork fish. So pretty. You see a lot of these on the reef when you're diving. Beautiful yellow striped fish with the black line on their head. I'm sure you could eat this guy. I don't know the regulations on them, but they're so pretty that I'm not going to. I have a heart. <laughs> See ya. This is a really fun thing to do, to come out here with anyone. You know, maybe you want to take your kids out here to catch a bunch of different species. That's four drops, four different kinds, well, three different kinds of fish. And it's just fun, you know? You drop every single bait down, you're catching a fish, put out some chum, get some bait, even people who've never really fished before catching a bunch of different species, even though they're not big, you're not filling the cooler, but you're having fun. Okay, drop number five, fish number five. We got another grunt. I think these are called blue line grunts. Do you know, Vic? I have no idea. Blue stripe grunt. Blue stripe sounds like it. I think that's what it's called. I'll fact check myself and put the answer right here actually, but I'm pretty sure it's called a blue stripe grunt. I mean, if I was desperate to eat something, I could eat him, but I'm not desperate, so see you later. I'm going through bait like crazy. That was our fifth drop down. And every single time I lose both my baits. Little things just down there, stealing my bait. I'm giving everybody lunch, but I'm not catching any lunch for myself. <laughs> All right, well, biggest thing I've hooked so far today. Oh, look at that, Vic! I did it! Yeah, you got the target species. I'm pretty sure that's the first ever file fish I've ever hooked. They got the world's smallest mouths, so they're really hard to hook usually. But, got them. Look at that mouth, so small. Tiny. They're literally like sandpaper. They have sandpaper skin. Look at those colors. Look at that bluish purple color. Crazy. And I wish you could feel it. It's literally sandpaper. Nothing feels like this. And he's making noise, you hear him? He's like grunting. Mm -hmm. And he's got this top fish. spine. Okay, so like I said, we have the chum bag out and we have some giant chubs in the chum bag, right behind the boat, right at the chum bag. Some of the biggest chubs I've seen. Monster chubs. Yeah, there's some big ones. Victor did a chub catch and cook a couple weeks ago and we compared it to yellowtail and we all thought the chub tasted better. He cooked small ones. I think that I want to catch one of these big boys and cook it up and see how these big ones taste. Now I'm on this light spinner with a little tiny gold hook and a piece of squid. So let's see if we can fool these guys. Oh, he ate it. Nope, he didn't. Are you serious? They keep spinning it out, that's smart. Oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. That's a giant. Look at that. I don't know if I can flip this thing. You want me to net him? That weighs as much as a freaking mahi. <laughs> Yep, folks, we're just out here netting chubs. <laughs> netting chubs on a Tuesday afternoon. Jeez, bro, <laughs> that thing's giant. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh no, he's already pooping. So chubs, like as you see, they're out there eating the chum. They poop. Every time you catch them, they poop all over the boat. They're pretty gross. I think that's why they get the nickname as a trash fish because they smell. They also smell because they poop so much. But I think that's their dinner. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is why people don't want to keep chubs. Oh, did, please tell me he didn't get it all over me. He like squirted it into my face. Please don't poop all over me. <laughs> I beg you. Hopefully he's done pooping. <laughs> okay. Ah! He wasn't done. No, he wasn't. So here is my record chub. I don't actually know how big these things get. Do you know how big they get, Vic? That, I, 
That's this the is biggest the big, I've seen. This is the biggest I've seen, for sure. Normally on the shallow reefs when we're diving and lobstering, they're much smaller than this. You don't see these big ones when we're diving. But when you put out a chum bag out in deeper water, you get these big boys behind the boat and he's got a lot of meat on him. For sure, they're chunky. I think I'm gonna bleed it after I'm done showing you it. I'm gonna bleed it and then throw them in the cooler, get them on some ice, and then we're gonna get them at the fillet table. But I think I'm gonna catch another one. Please, catch me one more. <laughs> they're really smart. It's like they pick it up and then they drop it because they feel the line or they feel the hook. You can catch it just about everything except your target species. Those chubs are a lot smarter than people think. Well, we caught another file fish. Flip them in the boat here. Ugh. So pretty. That's him. That's him. Another big boy. Ready for the net? No, don't do it. Don't risk it because you have a little hook. There's no shame in netting a chub. There's a lot of shame in netting a chub. This one fought better than the first one. Yeah, he's digging. Just wait. Jeez. There you go. All right, you poop yourself out in that net, all right? Before you come out. in the boat. The hook came out as soon as it got in the net. You still want to flip him? Okay, there we go. I think this is bigger than the first one was. Big old chub. This one didn't poop in the boat, so thank you. <laughs> I dropped the chicken rig down. We moved out a little deeper. See what was out here? Whoa, that. beautiful rats. Oh yeah, certainly got neat colors. These are very slimy, very slimy. Look at him. Yellow, teal, purple, blue, green. See ya. Well, second round on the chicken rig out deep. And this thing's got some shoulders. It's like Brick was saying earlier, you know, if you have someone in the family who's just starting out how to fish or learning, or just want to go and bend the rods. Oh, beautiful. You can come out here and Listen, your cousin from Wisconsin doesn't know the difference between this or a dolphin. If they pulled this up, they'd be like, oh my gosh, look at this thing I caught in Florida. It's amazing. A queen triggerfish, right? Oh yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. We just caught like the two prettiest fish all day, back to back. Beautiful. Let it go. See ya. So like Victor said, we moved out deeper and now we are in 100 feet and he's doing the exact same thing using the same chicken rig that we were using before. Again, just having fun catching different species, not filling the cooler. I mean, I did catch those two chubs for dinner, but not your typical dinner plate fish, I guess you could say. All right, guys, we are back at the fillet table with our big old fat chub here, and it is time to fillet. Gonna start with a head cut, lift up his little peck fin, Wow, they got they're, some hard skin. Yeah, they're, they're pretty tough. You gotta give it some umph. Well, I can't lie to you. This is my first chub I'm ever flying. Guess we'll find out whether or not it'll be my last, huh? So we attempted bleeding these guys. Um, we kind of just like ripped out their gills a little bit. And the meat looks pretty darn white. Getting up around the rib cage. Yeah, they have a big rib cage too. Every time you fillet something new, you want to go slow to figure out what the fish is like so you don't miss meat. Because every fish is a little different. I mean, you know, you use the same basics for every fish, but everything is slightly different. Everything has a different backbone, everything has a different rib cage. There you go. I'd say that was pretty darn good. Always lay my fillets on the edge of the table so that your knife can be nice and flat. I skipped a piece because it's got these hard scales and I don't want to get the scales in there so I skipped over that hard part of the tail.
There you go. You gotta guess what you're having for dinner. Based oh. on the filet. Based on the filet? Do you already know? Did anyone tell you yet? No. Nobody told you. I just seen a scale. It was kind of silvery. Let me see the other side of the filet. Wow. He's kind of chubby. <laughs> Isn't he? He's pretty chubby. Yeah, he's... He's he, stout. Yeah, he, he is. He's not a... He's he pretty chubby, if you know what I mean. Oh! <laughs> it's a chub! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good hint. I just cut out the pin bones. Anything eating it? Oh, the catfish are here for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Boom, he got it. You excited to eat chub? This is your first chub, isn't it? Yeah, did, haven't people said they're good? We ate them already. D did I? No, you, you never haven't. Had no. What, what isn't good? I think it's easier to talk about fish that aren't good than fish that are good. Because aren't all, almost all fish good? What ones haven't we liked? None. None. <laughs> None. None, huh? Oh, look, it was a chubby one. They're big chubs. Isn't that a big one? Yeah. What do you think of my filet job? Golly. 10 out of 10. That is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Holy smokes. On my first chub I've ever filleted. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the reason chubs get a bad rep because they got a giant stomach, so they can eat a lot. Like any fish that's got a really big rib cage, you know, has a big stomach. Look at that. That is some Ew. intense stuff going on there. That is the biggest set of intestines I've ever seen on a biggest, fish. Biggest, for sure. That's probably oh why they poop so much because they got a lot going on in there. <laughs> For the size fish they are and all that, I don't even know what all this nonsense is. Bizarre. <gasps> no way, there's seaweed in here. Okay, this is his stomach here. Yep. It's like there's like multiple stomachs. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got some craziness going on. You ready? That, my friends, is seaweed. A lot of times you see stuff up messing around, eating stuff in the seaweed, and you think that it's, I don't know, jacks or things like that. A lot of times it's chubs. They go up in the seaweed. And look at that. They're not eating stuff in the seaweed. They're eating the seaweed. That's all yep. straight sargasm seaweed. He's got like four stomachs. Literally. Crazy. He's a sea cow. Look at all that. Well, there you go. A bunch of seaweed. There's no crabs or shrimp or fish. That's literally seaweed. Crazy. The seaweed eating fish. Like I say, with every fish, pop the eyes before you throw it in because they will for sure float, especially something with a stomach this large. You should probably even cut out the stomach because that stuff holds gases in there and that floats. But if you cut it out, then the fish can eat it easily. Like that. <laughs> cool. Gone. All right, well, I'm gonna flame the other chub and I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. Welcome back to the kitchen. Spartan, a new set of earrings. <laughs> Close up. Close up of my earring. Somebody in, is feeling extravagant tonight. <laughs> must Why? be this fish. Chub's got you feeling all types of ways, bro. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to the kitchen, guys. So we have our chubs here. I tried to take out most of the center bloodline, but unfortunately with a lot of fish, they do have a lot of bloodline on the backside, some more than others. And that's kind of just the blood that's against the skin. So when you do a good job skinning a fish, sometimes you get that blood on the back side of the fish. But since we're cooking this fresh, you shouldn't taste it. It doesn't matter, I'm not gonna try to take it off, but I did take out the center bloodline. I don't think we're gonna be tasting it since it's fresh, but as you can see, there is some. So I am making blackened chub quesadillas. So the first thing that we're doing is putting on my favorite blackening seasoning. I feel like I say this in every video, you guys have seen me use this a bazillion times. Magic Seasoning Blends Black and Redfish Magic by Chef Paul Prodome. 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 Man, that is a mouthful. Okay, so this is hands down our favorite blackening seasoning. If you've never tried it before, give it a shot. I promise you won't be disappointed. Um, 
I'm sure you might have your favorite blackening seasoning as well, so go ahead and use your favorite blackening seasoning. Again, you can do this with any kind of fish. It doesn't have to be a chub. Um, I've been wanting... <laughs> Most people probably don't have access to a chub. Let's be real here. I've been wanting to make these quesadillas for a while now, and it's finally happening. So this is what we're doing it with. It's not like I'm doing a taste test because I already know what chub tastes like. If you guys want to see the first time we ever had it, I'll have Victor's video linked down below of the first time that we made chub and we thought it was absolutely delicious. I know that I'm smothering it in blackening seasoning. I'm gonna put it in butter and I'm gonna put it inside a quesadilla. So I realized that I am kind of covering it up. So beautiful layer of our blackening seasoning. I have two yellow onions um, chopped up into this bowl, just into like slices, just like that. So the next thing we're doing is getting a pan nice and hot, throwing in some butter and start caramelizing our onions. So we had our yellow onions caramelizing in some olive oil and then I added some butter to the onions. And I didn't want them to get completely cooked yet, but nice and brown. And now we're going to take our fish and the hope is that all of these fit in at once. So we'll see. Did you say hope or hoot? Our hope. <laughs> it sounded like you said our hoot. Can we do it? Yeah, we sure can. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to try to flip them. Now, when I'm done um, blackening them, I'm gonna break them up to put them into the quesadillas. So I don't really care if they fall apart, but it seems like they're staying together pretty well. Look at those onions, man, they look oh, amazing. Good. I mean, come on, that looks amazing. There's no way that can be done. Okay, so my fish was done cooking and I kind of just like smashed it up and mixed it in with the onions. And now I'm going to put it into this glass dish because as I'm making the quesadillas, I want my meat to stay warm. So I'm gonna just put this in the oven. So I'm gonna get all this out of here. But this is what I got going on. So I have my large taco shells here, flour tortillas, and I have some Mexican four cheese blend cheese, which I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people just don't like the idea of cheese and fish, which if you don't like cheese and fish, then this dish isn't for you. But maybe you just have a problem with cheese and not the fact that cheese and fish is being put together. Now this is something Victor whipped up yesterday, which is some um, basically like chipotle sour cream. There is our cheese and our chipotle sour cream. And now we're gonna put in our fish. Finish it off with, yes, a little more cheese. Don't hate. Don't hate until you try. Now with that same pan that we cooked our fish in, which is on low heat now, we're gonna just fold over our quesadilla like this and put that baby in. Mm -hmm. And there we go, just let those babies get warm. Okay, time to flip our quesadilla. Ooh, baby, look at that. Oh yeah. Turn that around so it fits in the pan. Woohoo! Good job. There we go. That's what you're looking for, golden brown. So I have two more ready to go on, and I'm gonna take these two off. Let's check, look at that, beautiful brown. These bad boys in. So 
now we're gonna take our Dexter pizza cutter, and this is what we're gonna use to cut our quesadillas. If you've never used a pizza cutter on a quesadilla, then you are missing out. Now, I have seven people here, and unfortunately, trying to cook things and keep them warm is kind of hard, especially when you're making something like quesadillas and only doing two at a time. But what we found to work is keeping your oven just on a warm setting. So you're not cooking, you're just literally keeping them warm. And then throwing these babies on here until you have enough so that you can all eat together. It's kind of weird when you have a bunch of people and only one person's eating at a time. So throw your oven on the warm setting, keep them warm, and then everyone can enjoy eating at the same time. We have some Mexican rice. We have some black beans. And we have our quesadillas. And to finish it off, um, I know, just like Brooke said, people are gonna comment saying fish and cheese are like oil and water, they don't go together, which I think couldn't be further from the truth. You put steak in it, you put chicken in it, you put shrimp in it. You can do whatever you want. I think if anything, this is being creative. And shout out to Brooke because there's a lot of people who watch, you know, her videos or other Catch and Cook videos. They're out there on the internet to learn because they're stuck in their ways of fried fish or just blackening fish or this and that. This is a nice, fun way to enjoy a meal with your family, your kids. You want to introduce your kids to fish? Put it in a quesadilla. I guarantee you they'll love it and then you slowly wean them away from that, and then they'll like all of their fish. I mean, protein is protein. It doesn't matter whether it's covered in cheese or rice and beans. I think it's very good. Good job, Brooke. They're really good. Like Victor said, if you like quesadillas, you'd probably like fish quesadillas. What do you think, Mom? I've made them with chicken, and I've never had them with fish, and they're better with fish than chicken. Wow. And I, I really love it. Yeah. Ben? I doubt all fish quesadillas are created equal, but this is the best quesadilla I've ever had. <laughs> it's delicious. Wow. Jen? Delicious. Just a lot of flavors and everything complements like, everything like really well. Perfect. Candace, you want to say anything? No. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Not a single person commented on the fact that we're eating chub because yeah. it's so oh, okay. good. There's seven of us here and nobody was like, oh, I was a little skeptical, but it's good. <laughs> it's chub. You've seen them before. You never ate them before. What do you think about that fact? Nothing wrong with chub. Nothing wrong with it, right? No. Delicious. Tastes good. Cool. Mm -hmm. We went out there to just have a fun day, bottom fishing on the reef, ended up catching those chubs, which are normally considered trash fish, but I'll tell you what, there was nothing trash about that. Absolutely delicious. And I highly recommend trying a fish quesadilla. Doesn't matter what kind of fish, maybe you wanna try it with chub, go ahead. There are days when you go out there fishing and you don't catch anything and there are chubs in your chum bag and you can't catch a snapper to save your life. Bring home a couple chubs, I promise you, you won't regret it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.